on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. And the new legislation will allow MPD to limit loitering by reinstating the ability for the police chief to declare a drug-free zone for up to 120 hours to disrupt and prohibit people from congregating on public space for the purchase, sale, or use of illegal drugs. Wow, that's going to be a difference maker right there. Now the police chief can declare a drug-free zone so people can't congregate to purchase or sell drugs. Also, We are creating criminal penalties and establishing a new crime directed towards organized retail theft in our city. Organized retail theft is now defined as uh, a group of people stealing uh, more than $1,000 worth of goods. Yeah. And now that's a crime. That's going to make a difference here. In the guy. Oh, and the other piece de resistance from Muriel Bowser yesterday, the mayor of D.C., said that uh, there's additional penalties if you commit a crime while wearing a face mask. Oh, dear. The face mask that she, you know, shut restaurants Incest, down insistent. for yes. if people weren't wearing them. Yeah. And uh, But, of course, just walking around every day. Right up until the moment you commit a crime, you can wear that mask right. and hide your identity. Yes. But then it's, yes. you're in Take real trouble. Mask off right if you, you carjack someone, you're in trouble. But if you wear a mask, you're in real, real trouble. trouble. All right, listen, I'm not an expert in law enforcement, but our next guest is. Maybe he can help us out. He is Gregory Pemberton. He's the chairman of the D.C. Police Union. I mean, I, it sounds to me, I, I've, I've said this, Mr. Pemberton, you, t- you tell me if I'm wrong, but as long as that mural still exists in D.C. that says defund the police, uh, which is an affront to your membership, as long as that mural that says Black Lives Matter that suggests that there is systemic racism in the police department. It gets a plaza. That, yeah, a plaza. Then then Muriel Bowser is, this is all a lot of noise that she's conducting here. What do you say? Well, good morning, Larry and Julie. And, and what I will say is, uh, obviously, we have our criticisms about the mayor, but w- what we're seeing here is actually a pretty common sense step forward, and, and it's a step back into sanity. Um, it, you know, obviously, retail theft is a big issue here for businesses, and, and having police officers be able to target folks who are in, in an organized fashion going in and stealing things and reselling them on the street, that could make a difference for businesses. Uh, declaring drug-free zones. We've seen a lot of open-air drug markets pop back up over the past few years since police staffing levels have dropped and we haven't been able to have the sort of narcotics enforcement that we did in the past. Neighborhoods are now being plagued with this. So the fact that the chief can come in and say, hey, look, this is a drug-free zone and allow some police activity there, that's a positive effort. And I, I know the mask thing is a little bit tricky, but the vast majority of people who are committing armed robberies and carjackings are wearing these masks. Yeah. And if it allows police to have another tool to stop people, to figure out, sort of interdict whether or not they're up to no good, that might be another great tool. But I think one of the things that's being missed here is that uh, in this bill, uh, the mayor is actually seeking to repeal four of the subtitles that exist in the Comprehensive Policing and Justice Reform Act which is obviously, as you guys know, I've been coming on your show for three years, Mm -hmm. you know, until I'm blue in the face talking about how terrible this bill is for policing. And while we'd like to see the entire thing repealed, uh, I think it does go a long way to talk about sort of common sense approaches to see the mayor looking to repeal four of the sort of most offensive issues in that bill. So, you know, we support it. Uh, I think that, you know, this isn't a panacea. It's not going to fix everything, but I do think that this is a step forward. What we're going to be looking at is which council members in the D.C. Council oppose this. And those are the folks that I think your listeners and, and um, the folks in the city and who live and work in the city should be paying attention to because those are the folks that are propagating these problems. Yeah, and one other thing that people who are listening in the district should should be aware of is that many of these fixes that she has now proposed are things that she created or the city council created. I mean, this drug-free zones was a concept that the city voted out in 2014. So it was there, then they got rid of it. I mean, it's this sort of constant pendulum swinging where things get better, then they do away with these legal structures, and then things get worse again. I mean, you know, sort of the the insistent on masking, you know, that that became sort of a cultural do. Um, so I think there is some frustration among people where, you know, some of the problems that now exist are being fixed because of what Democrats did in the city to create these problems in the first place. So hmm. I, I, you know, I, I'm sure you feel that frustration as well, especially when it comes to recruitment, when people do not want to work in this city, at least in law enforcement, because it's so bad. 
Well, that, that's absolutely right. And, and I think the best example that we have is this Comprehensive Policing and Justice Reform Act. You know, it's an 84 page bill with 26 subtitles. There's not a single thing in there that's positive for the city or positive for public safety. Right. And now that we've seen the empirical data, because it's been in effect for three years now, we know that it has caused crime to skyrocket and a thousand or more officers to leave the agency. And we can actually track this back to this bill. It's very frustrating to be fighting the city council and other city leaders to say you need to repeal this. Uh, that you're, you're absolutely right. The city council comes in, does absolutely terrible things to the city in, in the guise of uh, you know, having this sort of utopia. And then years later, when we all find out it's a terrible idea, they'll just create another government agency to tell them what the problem is yeah. and create a whole bunch of uh, other set of laws and a bureaucracy to, to figure out how to fix the problem rather than to right. just undo the mistakes they made. You're absolutely right. Drawing away more money, by the way, on those studies and commissions that could be used to hire more cops. Um, and, and nowhere yesterday did we hear the mayor say, OK, we did these things and now we need to reverse them because we were wrong. You'll never hear that. Uh, Mr. Pemberton, real fast before we leave, at, at one point we were planning on staffing 4,000 cops in D.C. When last I saw, we were down under 3,500. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was there anything yesterday that you heard from the mayor that would reverse that trend, that would get you more recruits and keep cops with better attitudes and better morale on the job right now? Uh, I don't know how much it's going to move the needle, but she is addressing some of the most onerous use of force policies uh, that were passed in the, in the Policing and Justice Reform Act. And, and hopefully that causes officers to maybe take a second look at, at whether or not um, you know, leaving the agency is right. Yeah. I don't really know how much that's going to move the needle. I think there's a lot more that needs to be done, but certainly getting back to 4,000, uh, no, I didn't hear anything that's going to get us back to 4,000 yesterday. Thank you, sir. Always good to talk to you, and you know we've got an open uh, door for you anytime something's up and the cops need a voice. You can let it be heard right here. Thank you, sir. Thank you guys so much. Have a good day. Greg Pemberton, chairman of the D.C. Police Union. It's